This piece has everything. It has a full-throated, wonderful professional jazz band called the Metropolitan Jazz Orchestra that is a, a hallmark of both the Hilton Center and the Center for the Arts in Fairfax having an annual program of really high-level jazz concerts. So that's the core of the piece, is this wonderful jazz band. My first take was, you know, what is this correlation? There can't possibly be, but when he started showing me some of the photos and then playing some of the music on top of seeing some of the footage, uh, I was immediately taken by the project. I've had a lifelong love of, of airplanes and especially aviation history. And um, I discovered jazz when I was about 14 years old. I was fortunate enough to uh, meet Wynton Marsalis about that time. In doing a project for uh, Jazz at Lincoln Center about STEM disciplines and it, their intersections with jazz, I started thinking about, um, you know, what, what's a STEM discipline that I know well? And the one I know the best is the history of flight. Okay, well, what was happening when jazz was invented? What was happening in airplanes? And lo and behold, the experimental period of the Wright brothers, 1900 1905, was the exact years that Buddy Bolden, the recognized first practicer of jazz, was active. And then I just started looking at other significant dates in airplane history and finding out that significant things were happening in jazz history at the same time. And um, how they just sort of evolved uh, at a very almost eerie parallel pace. And so that became a talk that I uh, put together, a slide presentation with music and film and so on. And I happened to give it at a steam table um, event at George Mason University and uh, Kevin Murray and uh, Rick Davis saw it and approached me about turning it into something for the theater. The script that Paul has created based on his original concept but much expanded now with, with two narrators who are both professional actors from the DC community, uh, Ed Jarrow who also happens to teach on the George Mason uh, theater faculty and Joe Lane who's a very fine actor in the, in the DC metro area. They embody the spirit of uh, flight and the spirit of jazz respectively. Then we have swing dancers from Mason's School of Dance who are choreographed by members of our, of our faculty, Linda Miller and Jim Lepore, to help illustrate the, the physical expression of the time. Then we have, on top of all that, we have a wonderful multimedia visual score that's been put together by Autumn Casey, who's a lighting and projections designer on our faculty, which using footage that has been acquired from all kinds of interesting sources, all the way from uh, uh, rare historic footage of the Wright brothers through X-planes and, and military aircraft and, and the footage from the Boeing Company, which is not coincidentally one of the sponsors of, of tonight's show. Uh, and it all comes together in a total work of art, which is music, theater, dance, and the visual arts. But there's a great integrity that improvising musicians and in the tradition of the, of the jazz music pass down from one another, which is to stay true to the form of the tune and to stay true to the harmonic progression. And then within that context, see how far they can stretch it, see how far into outer space they can go, see how far they can go on one tank of gas. All those kinds of things are really a great correlation with jazz music and, and flying. I, I know in the jazz world, most of the musicians in the Metropolitan Jazz Orchestra have seen it all. They've already done it all. You, there's no gig that I can think of or venue or, or context that these musicians have not played in. But this particular one represents a message of depth and weight. It means something. It, it, and, and any of this for it to go has to have some sort of message of depth and weight. But it is American history and it is what we want to you know, as a collective group pass on to our young students their cultural inheritance. This certainly has a place as a theatrical concert, um, just on its own merits, I think it really holds up. Um, but it does have a, also have a very strong educational message, and I think hopefully a very inspirational one. I think To Swing Through the Sky has a life beyond its premiere tonight at the Hilton Center. Imagine the number of audiences around the country and maybe even around the world that would want to see this because it celebrates creativity and ingenuity and progress and freedom and joy uh, and it does it in an original synthesis of ideas. Who wouldn't want to see that? So we hope we can take this show on the road. Yeah.